Jake the Film Guy, microbudgeter.com. And in part three of our videos on hiring a subcontractor, we're gonna talk about two things, spelling out expectations and contracts. There's a burning thing and it makes a fiery ring. Let's talk expectations. Spell everything out with your subcontractor. Don't take things for granted, like even showing up on time. For example, I once had a subcontractor. She kept showing up routinely late. Finally, on the third or fourth day, I said, listen, I need you to be here at X o'clock sharp. Guess who wasn't late for that next shoot? When it comes to hiring a subcontractor, make sure you have a sturdy work agreement in place. You know what I mean? In other words, you need to have a couple of boilerplate things, meaning the typical contract language that you would share with anybody. If you have a contract for your subcontractor without some of these key things in the written agreement, they may not get done. I would reinforce arbitration. Where are you guys gonna go and how are you guys going to resolve any kind of disputes that show up? It should take place in your county, first of all. Secondly, who owns the intellectual property? They're creating some kind of digital or maybe physical work for you in the service of your film or video. Who owns that intellectual property? should be talking about those things. Third, I would make sure that you actually spell out for them, more like a helpful reminder, more than anything, that because you're hiring them as a subcontractor and not a W-2 employee, because they are more than likely a freelancer, you're going to have to fill out a 1099 for them come time for tax season next year. In other words, IRS wants to know if you paid them more than $600 in that tax year, well, what's their social security number? What's their address? What's their name? How much did you pay them? You don't have to, but there is an optional form that you can download from the IRS website that helps you collect this information that you could hand to a subcontractor. This is not a form you have to turn into the IRS. It's merely a way for you to compile that information. Honestly, you can send them the 1099 miscellaneous income form through a program like TurboTax, affiliate link below, or an old fashioned paper version of it and collect that information as you do the tax season next year. But you might wanna remind the subcontractor, hey, this job or any collection of jobs in this tax season, this tax year, if it goes over $600, I'm gonna need your social. I'm not gonna be irresponsible and farm it out to people overseas. Savvy, be clear, be correct, but most importantly, over communicate. There are so many other things that you can include in your contract language click on that blog post link below, or take a look at the blog post for contracts in general, or it's accompanying video. When you've been able to take this information and bless someone else with it, that's what I wanna know about. Shoot me a DM, leave a comment below, send a smoke signal, courier pigeon, whatever you gotta do, old fashioned Western Union telegram. They're actually out of that business now, but that's unrelated. I just wanna hear if you've been able to use this information to bless someone else's career. We're all in this together as micro-budget filmmakers. I am with you in telling stories of hope of the one true king, and I want to encourage you in whatever way possible. So let me know how to best serve you, and when you've been able to do the same for others, I wanna hear about it. God bless you, keep creating with the king. I'll see you on the next video.